I titled this short exhortation uh, when Dicky said I have 30 minutes. I'm not used to preaching for 30 minutes. I'll try. I'll try to preach because I usually like to preach, pray, do everything as as much as I can, but I don't know. I'll try. The title of this ministration or this word of God is a dawn of expansion. A dawn of expansion. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 and 19 was a charge given by God to the Israelites at a strategic time in their history and in their life. And God said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the things of old. Why? He said, behold, I am doing a new thing. And the Lord said, don't look for it long from now. He said, now it shall spring forth. He said, will you not perceive it? In other words, when you want to experience new things, or expansion, it is a collaboration between you and God. God is the doer of new things. You are the recipient of new things. God is the, is the one who causes multiplication, expansion. You are the one that receives it. And so if you will receive it, God said, get ready. Prepare. Don't expect less of what I want to give you. And that's what I'm going to just be sharing this morning. How God works expansion and what is God's path. Okay, I'm going to define expansion from the scriptures that I've read as a matter of what God is doing as a new thing. So that's why I said I'm fusing the, the, the theme of the month and the theme of the year together that the Lord wants to do a new thing and the new thing the Lord wants to do is to give you multiple expansion. I thought somebody would say amen. Okay? Now, if God is going to do something new and it's that new thing is that it will increase you and it's going to expand you, what is your role? Alright? And what is God doing? What is God's path? And what is your path? And then we'll pray. Let me say, by the way, by the grace of God, when I preach, I also prophesy. So I'd like you to be very sensitive because God will be speaking to you directly. God will be reaching out to you directly. And when a prophecy comes, it is not just for you to just listen. It's for you to key into the spirit of the word of God. So that you can actually maximize all that God wants to give you. Amen. A passage we read, Isaiah chapter 43, 18 and 19, God says, I want to do a new thing. But before I do it, that's verse 19. He said in verse 18, he said, forget the past. Disconnect from the past. Don't dwell there. Don't cling to it. Why? If you continue to cling to the past, you can't get the new. If you are too traditional and too religious and too much in love with your past, God will be doing new things and you will not know. And so it is important that every one of us, if indeed we will experience something new, as God has given us that, that thing for this month, then there must be a disconnection from what we are used to. There must be a disconnection from what we traditionally love to stay with. There must be an invitation, a, a thirst, an hunger for something bigger, something greater, something that only God
God is a vacancy unlimited. When it comes to expansion, there will always be room with God. Somebody need to hear that quickly. When it comes to expansion, there is always what? I can't hear you, church. There is always what? There is always room with God. So if you are here now and you think that's the best, no, you are getting it wrong. Even though God brought you to that place, praise God, that's not the best. God still has a bigger place. When it comes to expansion, there is always room. There is always space to expand and to expand and to expand. So when it comes to God, new things abound. When it comes to God, God is the doer of new things. He makes new things happen with Him. Everything from Him, there is no end because He has no beginning and He has no end. We are the one that is limited. We are the one that has measure. God is without measure. Somebody shout hallelujah. The God that we serve is immeasurable. It doesn't cost him anything to do it every second for us. So stop limiting God in your, in your mind. Stop limiting God in your thoughts. Stop believing the lies of the devil. Stop believing the lies of situations around. Why? Because the one that you are connected to is the God of new things. Is the God with whom there is no limitation. Is the God with whom there is no boundary. Is the God with whom there is no measure. Is the God that everything is available. Somebody say everything is available. I hope you are not talking. Ah, I was going to ask you a question that you will stand up. Oh, I'm a teacher and I and I want rapt attention when I'm teaching the scriptures. So let's quickly look at the Bible that we read. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's let me go to 50. Let me stay more on 54, verse 2 and 3. The first thing is that expansion in that passage is a promise of God to his people. He said, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Okay, spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth unto the right and unto the left. Now, verse 2 is our part. Verse 3 is God's part. S-I-K-G, Isaiah, Uri, Keren, Leila, Adotaye, Ishe, Sorry, SIK Jinisha Tiwa, Esha Keta, Isha Itono Mashin. Expansion will come from God. But listen, church, expansion is a response to your preparation. It is what? Some of you are lost. Hey, you don't know me, I'm coming to you. It's a response to what? If you want expansion, what do you do? If you want expansion, what do you do? Tabafe kia soa bebe wajin lata bika gorosi awa gangan lati mura rele. A man that has large expanse of land or large expanse of place or large expanse of property that is limited in his mind is of no use to him. Do you hear that? Expansion comes to those who are ready for it. So the question this morning is, are you ready? Expansion comes to those who are prepared. Expansion is a response from God to the people that are ready. So the question God is asking you this morning is, you have been praying for expansion. You have been asking for expansion. You have been talking expansion. Are you? I can't hear you, George. That's the question God is asking you, Name New Spring Baptist Church. Are you ready? Can you look at 
that verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 54, the first thing is that it said, enlarge the place of your tent. Where you are, start from where I can hear you. Where you don't, don't look for expansion by going to clear somewhere else. It said, from where you it is going to start from where you are. That's how God works. You're going to start with what you have. You're going to start with who you are. You're going to start from the point that you can easily connect with. Expansion is from where you are. Take a large the place of your tent. God is not going to be the one to do that. Do you see that in scriptures? Am I talking scriptures? Hello? Am I talking scriptures? Say, you are going to be the one to do what? So, when it comes to multiple expansion, the multiple of what you want is the multiple of your preparation. The multiple of the increase of what you want is what you prepare for. You have a degree and you can still do more, do more. So that when you say, we want this word, say, I have it. Say, you alone, say, want this, you want this person who, has, who is versatile in this, Said, I have an idea. Said, what makes you have an idea? I have one little training in it. Said, you have something to, to show? Said, this is it. Ah, okay. That is why some people will get getting blessed, getting increased, getting increased, and some people will be just looking. I used to make an example of Ali Kudangote. Now, in another few months, what will be his latest business? I can't hear you. Eh? What do you know him to be doing before? Sugar. He didn't start with production. He started with sales. On Tanyo. In fact, my God. He started. Dan Tata gave him. Alan Dan Tata opened his mattress. And he brought out money and gave. That's how he started. And then he was selling sugar, selling, you know, in the market. And then the same person that was selling the other day now. Controls the production of it. I am not. I don't want to say nationwide. Why would I say nationwide? Maybe, maybe, maybe Africa into the world. Is that is that the only thing he does? I, I just saw. Is that the only thing he does? Is it only sugar you know about Dangote? Oh yeah, tell me other things. Who is the champion in that in that industry? 
So if they enter that industry to be somebody that you will not know, when he enters, others who are champions, they will start shaking that this guy. Expansion. Making room. Now he's entering into the oil. Wait, though. It's not just oil he's entering. Do you remember he has entered fertilizer now? That one has started. <laughs> the room you make is the room God will fill. If you hear anything today, church, take this with you. That it is the room I make. That's the room God will fill. If I make one room, God fills it for me. If I make ten rooms, how many rooms will we build? I can't hear you. I said, if I make ten rooms, how many rooms will God fill? He will fill ten. I make hundred rooms, he will fill it. Because the one that we serve is, <laughs> is unlimited. I like to have the picture of the God that you are connected to. I like to have the God, I have to have the, have the mental picture of the power of the one that is at work in you. The choir sang to us that that power is the power of the Holy Ghost, is the power that can do so much. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Church, if you have room for it, God can feel it. If you have room for it, God can feel it. So expansion is a promise of God. That's the first thing I have to tell you. And the promise of God to his people. If you have room for it, God can feel it. I saw in that same passage, Isaiah chapter 50. For said it's a commitment from God and a response to his people to expand to experience expansion. In other words, expansion is a partnership between God and his people. Now, the interesting thing I saw, and I want you to quickly look at it together with me. Let's look at verse 3. I don't like this state at you are doing. I will ask you questions soon. Verse 3. Can we look at verse 3 together? For thou, let's read it together, church. Everyone, one, two, three, go. All right. Slow down. God said by talking to one person. He said, you, what's your name, sir? Ah, yeah, my name's sake. I also answered Dio. He said, for Dio, we. But I will start just with you. He said, for Dio. Listen to how God said it. Shall break forth on the right and on the left. Good. Did he stop there? What did God say next? And thy seed shall and thy seed and your seed. What does that connote, church? Expansion. When you are taking expansion, it is not just with you. It is beyond you. Expansion is not just about you. Is beyond you. Expansion is something that must go beyond you. Expansion must go into the future. Expansion must connect with your children. Thank you for saying amen. Church, when it comes to expansion, God is not limited to you. He knows how much age you will have. For he's saying he's preparing for even your children's. But let me see. Let us see the connection. If your children's children will experience the expansion, excuse me, who will make the room? I can't hear you. It's you. If we will go beyond where we are and we leave room that our children will say, Thank God for our fathers. Thank God for our mothers. Excuse me, who has made the room, please? Is that scriptural? I was teaching in church yesterday. Dickness was there. Now, listen. The covenantal blessings that Isaac received, that Jacob received, that Israelite enjoyed. Excuse me, who labored for it, please? God said, I'm going to bless you. What was speaking to 
Isaac in Genesis chapter 20. What chapter now? 26. When he said, Stay in Gera, don't go to where you want to go. He said, For I will bless you, I will multiply you because of what Abraham, not because of you, because of what Abraham, your father, has done. He has struck a covenant with me. I am committed to him. The person he's talking about, daddy, mommy, they are dead. Abraham can so worry. Abraham tiku shuba ishere Abraham she aye to ti fi kale un igoro aro modo mo re aye yen soro fun aye rere te fi kale fun aro modo mo yin rere yo soro fun mo loruko Jesu Church what Abraham did spoke generations after careless with your life because you carry generations inside you. If you are careless, oh, and you live in such a generation that is very careless. Ah, hey, very shameless, very carefree, very careless. Do things that ah, some of us who are not who are not raised in this time, who used to be raised, you know, when we are much younger, we are conservative people. And we see what these young people are doing. We shiver. Because what they are doing is opening doors that they cannot close themselves. When it comes to expansion, God is bigger than you. When it comes to expansion, He's looking beyond you. So when God is talking to you about expansion, He's not just addressing you, He's addressing all the seeds inside your womb, He's addressing the, the seeds inside them. <laughs> So when God is talking to me, he's not just talking to me, he's talking to the seeds in my loins and inside them. Only him can do that. I hope somebody will see and we become more careful with how he or she lives his life from today. That, hey, whatever I'm doing is not just about me. It's about the legacies that is coming after me. Say, and thy seed. Somebody say, thy seed. I can hear you say that I see. So it's not just only you. It will start with you, but it will not end with. I can hear you, George. It will start with you, but it will not end with. You see, we are dealing with the positives. So as it is in the positive, it exists in the negative. Boshe waninu igoro iposi gigasi ati be be lo ni rere be no luwa ninu eite yon she ni iti oda eite yon she ni iti oda irupi da buburu te yon fun ne iti oda e yon fun fun ara re ni kon ni kwa ti e son rebade Oh, Nicocolo, my dead bell. I want to run on Domino and then be. Church, be careful with your life. Don't live your life like people who don't know the God that you know. Some of us, we are living our lives. We claim that we know, you know, in the Sunday school, I was listening to conversations that some of us, we, 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 the way we live our lives is very clear and very obvious that we, we, we just deal like. We really don't know the God that we serve. It's very obvious with the way we deal. If you understand the God that you serve, that is the God that when he's looking at you and he's speaking to you, he's looking beyond you. And so when you are dealing, you are dealing as somebody who is dealing with somebody greater, who is seeing four generations beyond you. When God is looking at you, he's not just seeing you, he's not just speaking to you, He's speaking to generations also coming after you. And that is why you can't afford to just say, don't worry, you people around you don't understand what you are doing that is right. You are making rooms. Excuse me, let's quickly look at scripture. When God commanded Noah to build the ark, I'm very sure that there are many people, but we make you know, uh, reference to it, that they laughed at him. Am I correct? I said, He was 
make him good. Am I correct? Oh, you are not following me. He was doing what? He was, that act he was building, he didn't build it in one day. I'm not sure he built it in one year. He was building it. And he was building it. Following one dimension that only God gave him. And people are just... Let's go to club, Joe. This one does not know what, what is next. Oh, I want to marry tomorrow. Don't mind your uncle Noah. We saw him doing one rubbish like that. Old school man. He's not, he's not trendy. Does not know what is trendy. Abby? He is not woke. What kind of. I didn't even know the meaning of that one. I just to see it now. Said something, something woke. I'm like, I don't understand. And funny enough, this is the don't, they, don't they don't even understand English. Let them write simple sentence correctly. They will, you will see all sorts of errors. And they are the ones now. Oh, you know, let me leave this. Sorry, I, I don't mean to insult the young people. I'm just, I'm just being myself. You know, like that. The guy was making room. Making room. Making room. People around don't understand what he was making room for. But the day came. When the reality came. Those who didn't understand, those who had snubbed him, those who had felt that he is, he is, he is wasting, he's a time waster, he is, he is a joker. Ah! The Bible says they were, they were knocking when God had shut the door. God knew that if we want to hear some people's voice are open, God himself was the one that locked the door. <laughs> so what will you do when God has locked the door? Even if you want your people to come in, they can't come in. Because when he asked them all to come in, they didn't come in. That's what happened. Church, people may not understand what you are doing in making room. That's where I'm going. People around you may not understand. Even the closest people that you expected to understand, they may not understand. But if this is your focus, if this is your prayer, if this is your vision, if this is what you want, church, what do you do? I can't hear you. You make room. Because expansion is coming. Ray Kalaba. That's a prophecy for someone. I speak by the authority of God. As you make room, expansion inevitable is locating you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not just locating you, it's locating your family, it's locating your children in the name of Jesus. Kai, make room, church. Because expansion is, expansion is, is coming. Make room because expansion is coming. That's a prophecy for you. Make room because expansion is coming. I repeat it again, make room. Because expansion is coming. Make room because expansion is coming. Make room because expansion is coming. Make room because expansion is coming. And it's coming to you. It's coming to your home. It's coming to your, to your, to your, to your ministry. It's coming to your family. In the name of Jesus. Make room. Tell your neighbor, make room. After today, when you want to remember me and remember this message, just say, I can hear you. Make room. Make room. Because expansion is coming. Let that be your new slogan. Make room. Because we are waiting. He had promised great time. See, church? Oh my God. God promised expansion. It does not fail. If he is the one that promised it, it will not fail. That is the person you are dealing with. You're not, oh my God, you're not, you're not dealing with these this, this liars that are going around telling people, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. I am the best president that you will ever have. But God is, we're not dealing with liars like them. I read a quote somewhere, said, they know that they are lying. We know that they are lying. They know that we know that they are lying. There is a fourth one I can't remember. Those are the people that want to. But that's not the person we are dealing with. We are dealing with the one who says, I am coming. Say, tell the daughter of Zion. Can you help me finish that? Say, tell the daughter of Zion that, that what? 
Okay, that shall be well with that. He said that our Savior is coming. That our Redeemer is coming. Make room, church. Expansion is coming. In your family, make room. If this is what you believe. For your children, make room. If this is what you believe. Make room. Because expansion is coming. All right. I believe God is spoken already. Let me check my notes. If there is anything else that is left. Make room. Because expansion is coming. What's our part? Let me, apart from, <coughs> apart from, you know, let me break down a little what it means to make room. And you see, it's interesting that all of these things you find in that passage in chapter 54 of Isaiah, verse 2 and verse 3. Can you project for me that verse 2 again? I'll stay on that verse 2. The Bible says, Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. He now gave a caution. What's the caution? I can't hear you, George. What does it mean not to spare? Don't hold back. So if people are saying, the Bible says it is your vision that should control the rooms that you make. It is what you can see that should determine how far you will run. In other words, it is not what people say to you. It is not how people feel about it. Some of us, we will stop because people are not validating what we are doing. We will be discouraged because people are not appreciating us. We will say, uh -uh, I have even tried, tried, tried. Nobody has commended me. Nobody has even seen what I'm doing. The question is, when you started, what did you, what did you see? Church, it is your vision that will drive your expansion, or that will, that will eventually lead to your expansion. So if you have a vision of something bigger, something greater, that, is be, that will be determined by the level of your preparation. That will Expansion. Said, don't hold back. Others may not see it. Don't hold back. Now, there will be discouragement. Don't hold back. Let me speak a little to discouragement. In the book of Second Kings, chapter six, verse one to seven. Second Kings, chapter six. Verse 1 to 7, write it down. The Bible talked about a people that desired expansion. The sons of the prophet, they told their master, Elisha, we want a bigger space. We have already over, we have already outgrown where we are. I want back KG, Ori Kefa, SLK, SLKJ. Said, this place is small for us. They have grown to a point that they feel this place is not big enough. And they approached their master. Said, Master, where we are is too small for us. Let's build, let's go to the stream, let's cut down logs, let's take a wood for ourselves, and let's build a new place. And what was the response of their master? Said, Go. Why? Expansion is the pleasure of God. Expansion is what? Is God's pleasure. He said, You want expansion? Where you are is small, you want a bigger one? Yes, with all pleasure. He said, Sir, we don't want to go alone. Go with us. He said, Fine, I'll go with you. Again, telling you that there is divine backing and support 
when you intend or when you embark on a mission or a vision for expansion. All right, this is where I'm going. A miracle happened, which was the, actually the major and center attraction that that story actually centered around. The miracle of how God made the axe head to float. Somebody said something. Until the point when the axe head fell into the water, that axe head was not known in the story. Nobody had anything about it. But because there is a mission of expansion, there is something that was making, you know, there was the mission of making room on course. They had to mention the axe head when there was a problem. The axe head had fallen into the water. And the Bible says, at the point when the axe head fell into the water, there was an alarm. Oh my Lord, he was born. He was born. Oh my God. I said, okay, where did it fell? He said, here. And the Bible says, the man of God threw the stick and the axe head floated. Now, this is where I'm going. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. There are some miracles that you will not experience until you have taken on the mission for expansion. Some miracles, did that miracle became necessary because there was a mission for expansion. There was an effort made in the direction of expansion. If you don't step out and make effort, there are some miracles that you will not experience, church. It will come to you in your house. It will come when you are set out in the name of the Lord. It will come at the point when you are pushing and you are saying, oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. I can't afford to be put to shame. God will now say, yes, I will help you. Somebody this week is experiencing supernatural help for expansion in the name of Jesus Christ. God is holding somebody's hand up in his bed and in his bed for expansion in the name of Jesus. Church, don't expect some certain miracles if you are not setting out, stretching out, doing everything to get expanded. It will come to you in your house. It will come to those who, are, who like to wish. Oh, and we wish that you know, everywhere is built up. We wish that our church is beautifully decorated. Oh, we wish that it doesn't happen by wishes. It does not happen by wishes. Everybody likes good things. I've not seen anybody that does not like good things. It does not, there are some good things that will not come to you in your palace. It does not come to you in your bedroom. You will have, it will come to you when you are there and you are saying, oh God, I'm there ready. I am pushing. I have right, I've written applications. I am, I am in the third place. I am in the fourth place. Oh God, look at me. Oh God, I'm making effort. And God will say, yes, I've seen you are making effort. Here is it. That is somebody's testimony this week. Somebody in here, I said that is somebody's testimony this week. That bit will sell through for your glorious expansion in the name of Jesus. That bit you put in for that contract, somebody that is needed to sign upon it, that signature is coming upon it in the name of Jesus. The favor you will need in the next direction of your expansion has finally located now in the name of Jesus. Shout they believe in Amen. Church, miracles happen when you take the right mission on expansion. Expansion, you see, expansion is about claiming territories. That verse 3, let's go back. Oh no. Just signal to me when you want me to stop. Isaiah chapter 40, 54. I'm going to round off now so that we can pray. I believe that God has spoken to you, so I will not go through all my notes. Okay. Our media people. I used to fight them in church. They are not as fast as I want. Now, listen to verse, verse, I, I want Isaiah 54, verse 2. There's a word there I'm looking for. Isaiah, okay. Now, church, can you read Isaiah 54, verse 2 again? Everybody. 
Hold on. The word I want to emphasize is the word stretch. Can you say stretch? Can I hear you very well? What does it mean to stretch? Can you do it in church? Just on your chair. Stretch, 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 stretch. What are you doing? You're making efforts to reach out. Now, expansion will stretch you. It's not a prayer. I'm just trying to let you. That's, that's the point of time. Expansion will what? Expansion will stretch you. Expansion will make you to go beyond. It will, it will inconvenience you. That's the other way to put it. Expansion will stretch you. If God says stretch, then he's telling you a message. Or expansion will stretch you. Let me say this all the time. Expansion, help me complete it. We stretch you. So if you want expansion, be ready to be. If you want expansion, be ready to be stretched. Expansion will stretch you. What? Expansion will stretch you. So be ready for stretching if you are ready for expansion. So it's a call for stretch. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm dealing more now with what you will experience and what you must be ready to do when it comes to expansion and your own path. Said so expansion will stretch you. Now, I said something a while ago, and I'd like to show you in scriptures now. Can you go to verse, um, verse 3 now? Verse 3. Verse 3. It said, enlarge the place. No, verse 3. Verse 3 of Isaiah 54 says, For you shall expand to the right and to the left. He now said, and your descendants will inherit the nations. Can I have a amen there? And make the desolate cities inhabited. Now, two things. When it comes to expansion, expansion is about taking territories. Expansion is about taking new places. Expansion is about occupying new terrains. Expansion is about being in places where you have not been before. But before you will get to places you have not been before, the expansion must have first of all happened within you. Expansion is, is nothing and it is useless. That's the word. To somebody who is limited in his mind. Somebody who can't see far. Somebody who likes to be traditional. This is the way we do it. This is the way we have always done it. This is the way we, they need to do it. In, in front of this church, Koshofer, in front of this church, Iti, Koen, Ibadon. This is the way. This is the way. If you are traditional and you are stereotyped and you are fixed, you are fixated, you are stag, you are, you are, I don't want to just say stagnated. That one, somebody will say, ah, pastor. If you are rigid, expansion is not for I didn't say that, that's what I saw in scripture. If you like it to just be the same, you enjoy it the way you have always done it. Expansion, I'm sorry, it's not for you. But if you want new things, like we are asking God in this month, then you are asking for, can you do expansion for me? You are asking for, I like that, expansion. And you will be expanded in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you will be expanded in the name of Jesus. For yourself, for your family, for your children, you shall be expanded. Expansion is a call. All right, let me let me just I can go on, but let me just stop now. I'll say one more thing and then I will just have to stop so that I need to show you something in scriptures so that you will understand the bigger picture about expansion. Expansion is not sudden. 
It's not what? It can't hear you. It's not sudden. We like it fast. We like it quick. We like it now. But expansion is not what? Let's check the scriptures. Exodus 23. Quickly, Exodus 23. Verse 29 and 30. Exodus 23. 29 and 30. Expansion does not happen suddenly. Let's read. Say, I will not drive them out from before you. Who is speaking here, please, George? It's God who is speaking to the Israelites. He's talking about the new place he's expanding and taking them to. He said, I will not drive them out before you in a single year. Otherwise, the land will become what? What did you hear in Isaiah chapter 54? He said, you are taking up desolate cities. Is that not what the Bible says? He said, I don't want desolation. Somebody hear God and hear the word of God in my mouth. God does not want desolation. God does not want empty spaces that is wasted. That is what it is to be desolate. Empty spaces that is not useful. No, if it will be empty, it is because there is a use for it. God is not a waster. Don't be wasteful. So he will not do the expansion suddenly. Why? He doesn't want desolate land, desolate places. He said, and then wild animals will now start coming to feed on you. No, that's not my plan. There are some expansion that if you are the one that, that, that smartly look for it, and it's not God, this is what happens to church. Suddenly, wild animals come. Do you not see why some people, you, they, they rise, and then they just fall. <laughs> and you say, ah, 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 ah. Is it not God that blessed me? It's not, ah, he just bought the car. Just build a house. Everything happened fast, fast, fast. And he died fast, fast, fast. Find out that expansion was not from God. Expansion is not suddenly. We grow into expansion. We do what? So if you want to experience expansion, what do you do? Oh, I'm not hearing you, church. You grow into expansion. That was what God was saying to them. He said, that land that you are going is bigger than you. Very big. But I'm not going to give you the room that you need in it. In other words, you are not going to take everything over. Everything is available for your taking. But you will have to grow. As you grow, you take over. That's another thing I want you to know today. As you grow, you work. Say it very well. As you grow, as you grow, as you grow, to the left, say take over. To the left, to the right, to the front, to the back. So as you grow, you what? So it's going to be you that will grow first and then you take over. If you don't grow, there's no taking over. Expansion will not happen suddenly. Let's read verse 30. Can you now read everybody, church? One, two, three, go. And I hear you say that again. One more time. Uh huh. All right. Uh huh. Then you will sit. Then you will occupy. Then you will have expanded. Rise up on your feet. Let us pray. Somebody talk to God this morning. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Lord, I want to grow. Shout out, Mama. I am tired of just praying and I'm still doing the same thing. Who is ready for that little by little journey? Who is saying, God, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to do this until I get it done. I'm not going to stop doing it. Lord, you will help me. I will not be tired. People may not understand, but Lord, you will help me. Lord, you will help me. Lord, you will help me. Ah, this expansion, I'm going to experience it. This expansion, I'm going to experience it. My family will experience it. My, my children will experience it. Is somebody praying? 
I can't even hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. Talk to God. This expansion is for me. This expansion is for my home. This expansion is what God has promised, and I will receive it. Hey, are you praying? Is somebody tired of where he is? Is somebody tired of where he is? Is somebody tired of where she is? Is somebody saying, oh God, I am ready. I'm going to do the best I can. And you will back up the best I can. And I'm going to take me from where I am. And I'm going to go to where you want me to go. Lord, I am ready. Oh, Father, I have seen today that you are ready. Father, help me, oh God, to be ready. Somebody pray, 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 pray. Parents pray, Lord, help me not to limit my children. Shut up. Help me not to limit my children. Help me prepare them for the expansion ahead. Recover. Help me prepare my children for the expansion ahead. Help me prepare my children's children, my grandchildren for the expansion ahead.
Listen, church, as all eyes are closed, God gave me one prayer. It's going to be in two dimensions. You know, as I preach and the word of God came, that you can see a barrier. You are trying, but the barrier is just staring you in the face. The power of God is in the house this morning. is going to remove that barrier. That's the first prayer I want to pray. I want to pray for people who have who, who know it that there is a barrier. That's number one. Number two, God has been telling you something. In other words, this one, you are the barrier to yourself. You are involved in something and God is saying, stop this thing. I want to lift you up. I want to help you. But you are just saying, ah, and I like this thing. Uh, it may be a relationship. It may be something. God is saying, he has been telling you, stop this thing. And you want to say, Lord, this money I surrender. I want our expansion. Expansion, you will give up something to receive it. If you don't give up your convenience, you can't get expansion. You can add that to your load. If you don't give up your convenience, you can't get expansion. So God is saying to you, what do you want to give up this morning? I like to pray for these two sets of people. I will pray them for you together. As all eyes are closed, raise your hands to heaven. You identify a barrier and you want God to take care of this barrier. I want to expand. Take care of this barrier. I want to expand. Your hands up. Your hands up. Take care of this barrier, Lord. I want to expand. The second prayer is, I know I am dealing with something and you have, and you have been asking me. I'm ready to obey. Raise your hand also. Lord, today is the day. Lord, today is the day. Lord, today is the day. I stand in prayer upon this altar with your people tonight, this morning rather, and I declare with authority and power that every power, every forces that are standing in their way unto expansion, give way in the name of Jesus. Every stumbling block, every barricade, every barrier that has either to stop you and you have tried, but you are caged in. Today, that barrier expires. I can't hear you, amen. That barrier expires. I say it a third time. That barrier expires. Before the Israelites, it was the Red Sea at first. Moses turned to them and said, these people, these people, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them. I stand in the name of the Lord as God's spokesman in your midst this morning. That that barrier give way for you to pass in the name of Jesus. That barrier or those barriers, they bow before you and you triumph over them in the name of Jesus. 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 For those of you who have been struggling over issues in your life and you are, you are surrendering to God this morning, the power not to go back, but the power to obey completely. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are saying yes to the Lord, you are giving your life to Christ. Today, the grace to go back and sin no more. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and expand. Go and expand. Go and be enlarged. In Jesus' triumphant name we pray.